Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, I am continuing on with the Fantastic Four reviews, and this actually was a paid request. This one is, of course, the 2005 film. This was a paid request that was sent in by Slade. And, oh, I have it right here. I might as well show it. <laughs> yes, we're going to be talking about the 2005 Fantastic Four, which I have actually always liked this film. I know when this movie came out, people hated it. People didn't like it. It made a bunch of money, though, which is why they made another one. Um, but I have always enjoyed this film. I always liked it. I do think that this is the best Fantastic Four movie. And I think now, all these years later, people agree. Um, you know, it took it took a while for this movie to kind of get a little bit of the respect. But um, it definitely earned it, at least in my opinion. Because, again, I think that this is the best Fantastic Four movie. But that's just how I feel. Like I said, I've always liked this movie. Saw this when it first came out. Did not see it in the theater, unfortunately. Um, but I did see it when it first came out on DVD. And I just finished watching it before hitting record on the camera here. And I still like it. It's still fun. It's still a good movie. Can't complain. Too much. A little bit. Not some. Anyway, or a little bit. Not too much. Anyway. <laughs> before we jump into the rest of this. As always, if, every, if everybody, yes, everyone, I demand... Everyone send in a paid request right now. No, I'm kidding. If anybody else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, ranch streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So, again, if anybody is interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. You want to see me try some different things. Hold on. Every time I start talking... It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. Uh, Fantastic Four. Like I said, I have always liked this film. Um, I remember when this came out. Um, unfortunately, again, I did not see it in the theaters. I wish that I did. But I always dug it. I never understood the hate for this movie. I never understood why people used to really beat up on it back in the day, back when the film came out, almost 20 years ago now. Um, you know, I think, well, I know one thing. This movie definitely deserves a better Blu-ray. We'll cover that in a minute here. But, um, you know, I just never got why people for the longest time didn't like this film. And then over the years, people came to like it. And then especially after the 2015 movie came out, people were like, you know what? That was not so bad. Again, sorry. Excuse me. My apologies. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that people like this film. I'm glad that this movie got kind of a second second wave of attention, which is always nice when it's a movie that you like. Now, when this came out, I mean, I, I had already known about the 1994 film. I knew that movie, what happened, and of course I just reviewed it. I reviewed the documentary as well. And then this one came out, I was like, okay, cool, you know, they're trying something else, they're trying something different, okay, I can get behind this. I've One thing I did, or maybe I did mention it in the 94 review, I've always been a fan of the characters, I've always enjoyed the characters. The Thing is one of my favorite superheroes, he is definitely my favorite of the team, because 
you know, he's kind of a tragic figure. You can do a lot more with his character, at least in my opinion. Um, and he's just, again, a, a very interesting character on so many different levels. I have uh, not a huge amount of Fantastic Four comics, but I, again, I do like the comics. I love the cartoon from 94. I, I used to watch that as a kid a lot. I've always liked that one. And I did like uh, World's Greatest Heroes. I think that's the one. I have it right here. So let me... Yeah, World's Greatest Heroes. I actually quite like that one, too. That was only one season, but, you know, again, I still like that. Um, and I like this movie. The next one, Rise of the Silver Surfer, I don't really remember much of that, but we'll cover that in the next film. But, you know, when this came out, I was like, cool. Damn, folks, I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, this came out in 05, so the superhero thing, the comic book movie thing, was kind of starting to go on the back end a little bit because, you know, at this point, all the Blade movies were out. Blade 3 didn't do that well. Spider-Man 1 and 2 were out. The first two X-Men's were out. Daredevil was out, which, you know, did okay. Hulk was out. And then after this, you had X-Men 3, which I like. Uh, Spider-Man 3 came out a couple years later. Eh. And then you had, you know, a couple years after this when they started the Cinematic Universe. So this was kind of in that tail end of that initial run of those movies. So, again, maybe that's why people didn't like it at the time, because... These are kind of when those movies were starting to fall out of fla flavor. I did that on purpose. Fall out of flavor. Favor. I know, I know. Fall out of favor with people. But I don't know. I've just... I've always liked this. I like that they did it as... That they did it as an origin story. I can't talk. I like that Doctor Doom was the villain. And, you know, he basically used the characters to his advantage and then became a bad guy. I enjoyed that. Um, I like that they embrace their powers and they embrace, you know, them being in the public because, like, in the, in the comic books it was like that. Everyone knew who they were. So I like that they did that with the movie. But I think it has a lot of good elements and it's a fun movie. I, I don't think that, you know, it got too too serious or too crazy you know it knew what it was it i mean it did take itself seriously it's not like it was a parody but it didn't it didn't get too crazy with it it stayed within what it needed to and it did well with the characters and and there's a good cast i like the cast i cannot complain about the people that they chose and i like that they kept for the most part they kept it central to the the five characters the fantastic four and doctor doom so, I'm, I, again, I just, I know I keep saying this, but I have just, this is one of those films, especially in the superhero comic book world, this is just one of those movies where I just don't understand the hate. I just have never understood why this movie was, was never that popular in the beginning. I just never understood why people didn't like it. Maybe at the time it was franchise fatigue, maybe at the time it was superhero fatigue, but I've always dug this film. You know, it has a lot of good elements in it. I don't know. But anyway, um, the plot for this one, even though I probably don't have to do it with this one. So, Reed Richards has this idea. We're going to go into space. We're going to conduct these experiments in this storm. And, you know, we're going to make advances and we're going to go forward and, and do some great things. So he goes to Victor Von Doom who they used to work together, but he kind of went off on his own and started doing things. And he agrees to it. You know, he's going to take advantage of Reed because Reed's not doing that well financially and such. And of course, Reed and Ben Grimm are good friends, so they go with, he goes along with them, which I did like that. And then Sue Storm worked, used to work with Reed. They were together, they broke up, and then she went to work with Victor Von Doom 
So they're going to go all together and do it, and then they bring along Johnny Storm. They go up into space. The storm gets to be too powerful. They can't do it. They come back to Earth, and they start to change. Of course, we know who gets what powers. I don't think I need to explain that part. And they start to embrace their powers. Maybe this is a good thing. Maybe we should do this. And then Reed's like, I can reverse it. We can go back to normal. Meanwhile, Dr. Doom, as he becomes, starts to change, and he likes the power and he starts to become a villain and starts going after the people that are against him because they're trying to push him out of his company and things aren't doing so well. So he wants to get back at people. He use, uh, excuse me, he uses Ben Grimm as a pawn because of course he's the thing and he wants to change back into being human. That doesn't work and the Fantastic Four come together to stop Doctor Doom. And they do. And that's pretty much it. You know, it kept it simple, which the 94 film did that as well. This movie did it. So I can't complain. And again, I do like the execution. I like that it's an origin story. I like that it touches on the relationship between Reed and Sue. I like that Johnny's, you know, pun intended, the hothead, and he wants, you know, to chase the fortune and the glory and the fame. And I like that the thing doesn't like what he has become and he wants to go back but he realizes that you know it's okay and he can use this to maybe help people in a different way and you know the woman that he loved left him and he finds another woman that doesn't judge him you know all stuff that's in the comics and everything so yeah there was a lot of interesting things and and different layers to it and i like that they melded it together for this movie and i think that it worked at least in my opinion Again, I like that Doctor Doom is the lead villain, and I know he comes back with the second movie, but I like that he was the only villain in this film. They didn't try to overdo it by putting different villains in, or, or maybe one that's not familiar to, to many people, which, in all honesty, the casual viewer, the, the, the mainstream people, don't know any other Fantastic Four villains. They don't know the Mole Man. They don't know Namor, you know, Submariner. They don't know that the Silver Surfer was originally a bad guy and then he became a good guy and then he got his own series and everything. A lot of pe most people don't know that. It's just so funny to me. Once again, I know I always talk about this, but it's just so hilarious to me that these people that, that only watch the movies, they have never read a comic book, they never intend to read a comic book, claim to be experts, yet they know nothing about these characters, they know nothing about these stories, the lineage, anything beyond these films. It just, I laugh every time, and I love, you know, not, not to sound like an asshole or anything, but I'm your guys' asshole, and that's why you like me. But I love when I just, I hear, overhear a conversation, and I correct somebody, or, or I'm having a conversation, and I correct somebody, and then they get pissed off. Well, you're the one that opened your mouth without knowing anything that you're talking about. Whether it's these characters or any other characters. It's just it's just so funny to me. Everybody wants to be right, and then when they're wrong, they get upset. Well, don't be wrong. Educate yourself. Why don't you actually read a comic book instead of looking at your fucking phone? Anyway, whatever. But it's just so funny to me that, that most people don't know any other villain besides, you know, uh, Doctor Doom for the Fantastic Four. Now, granted, in most of the media, that's the only character that they use because it is the most popular. It is the one that people are going to go to. So there's that. Um, I really like the cast in this film. I do. Um, I thought everyone did fine. Um, Ewan uh, Grufford, I thought was a great Reed Richards. I thought he was a great Mr. Fantastic. I like Jessica Alba. I know a couple years ago, she made all these fucking comments, you know, about diversity and this and that and this and that um, and all this other stupid shit. And it's like, shut up. You know, I like her as an actress. I do. I do enjoy her work. And yeah, she is gorgeous. I mean, she's not ugly, but 
you know, when you keep making stupid comments like that, and you know, she was like, there, you know, there wasn't enough diversity in Marvel and this and that, and I was the first. It's like shut up. But she was, she was a good choice for Sue Storm. Um, Chris Evans, I thought was a good choice for Human Torch. <clears throat> of course, as we all know, later he would be Captain America, and then he would reprise his role in Deadpool and Wolverine, which was funny. And Michael Chiklis was perfect as the thing. I love Michael Chiklis as an actor and as a person. And he was the perfect choice for it. And the fact that <clears throat> it was practical, it was a suit, I can't complain about that either. Um, and I know that he loved playing this character. He loved playing this role. And, you know, uh, he loved the fact that kids would come up and, and want to take pictures and autographs. And, you know, he said he never never turns down uh, an opportunity to sign a picture for a kid or take a picture with a kid. And that, that I respect the hell out of him for that. For And for other reasons. He does a lot of work, a lot of charity work, and he's just such a great underrated actor. But he was perfect as the thing. When he was announced as the thing, I was like, awesome. And at the time, he was still doing The Shield, which I've never seen that show, but I always wanted to because of him. I need to one of these days, I need to hunker down and watch that, and I need to watch The Wire. Because being from Baltimore, I've never seen The Wire. But one day soon, I'll, uh, I'll hunker down and watch those shows. But um, he was perfect. And uh, Julian McMahon, he was on Nip Tuck, which was on the same network as uh, The Shield at the time. I thought he was a great Doctor Doom. And I liked his, you know... The suit, the suit was practical. The mask was practical. I like that design, so I can't complain. But this has a really good cast. I thought everybody's chemistry was good. They really gelled together, particularly Chris Evans and Michael Chiklis. I thought their chemistry was really, really solid in this movie. Um, but they did a really good job, all of them, and we'll, you know, I'm sure in the sequel that'll. That'll improve. Again, I've seen the sequel before, but I don't remember anything about it. It's crazy, I know. I like the practical effects when they're there. They're, like, again, I like that they had a practical Doctor Doom suit. I like that there was a practical Thing suit. You know, there is some good practical stuff in it, but there is a lot of bad CGI. This is 05. This is when CGI was really taken over. Um... But, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. But I, li I really like the practical effects. The movie cuts at a good pace. It's 105 minutes, but I never thought it was boring or it got tiresome or anything like that. Um, you know, I like the structure. Again, I really like the story, how it's an origin story and them dealing with these powers and, and the celebrity aspect of it, which, again, was in the comics. It was in the cartoons and such. So I like that they paid tribute to it. It is well directed. Tim's story, he would come back to do the sequel. Um, I think he's a good director. Now, I'm not too familiar. I know what else he's done, but I haven't seen much of it besides these. Um, but I do like his style. I, I do think that this is well directed. And I like the script. I thought it was a good script. I never thought it was lame or, or cheesy or corny or you know other stuff that that people said, you know, um, at the time that the movie came out, and even a couple years later. But, you know, all good stuff. I mean, the only thing that I didn't really care for was the bad CGI, to be honest. That's really the only thing. Everything else I, I enjoyed. I really like the song uh, Come On, Come In from Velvet Revolver. They did... The song set me free from the Hulk movie a couple years before that, and then they came back for this. Um, which song do I like more? Maybe this one, I'm not sure. Set Me Free is a pretty awesome song, too. I'm not sure which one I like more. Maybe this, but I, I do quite enjoy that song. Some of the other songs aren't bad on the soundtrack. Can't complain. I like the score by John Ottman. Um... But at the end of the day, like again, I have just always liked this film. I have never understood 
why this movie got hate and people didn't like it and people shit on it when it first came out. I, I dig it. Like I said, unfortunately, I did not see it in the theater. I wish that I did. Maybe next year they'll put it back in for the, the 20th anniversary and the new one that's coming out. I doubt it, but we'll see. Um, but I remember you know, checking this out on DVD when it first came out, and then it, I remember it being on FX a lot, and I used to watch it from time to time on there. I would catch it here and there. I do actually have this on VHS as well, because I think this and Batman Begins were the last two comic book movies, was the last two superhero movies to get VHS releases. So I have Fantastic Four. I don't have Batman Begins. I would like to get that, actually. Because I, I like Batman Begins. I don't think it's amazing or fantastic, but I like it. Um, but I have it in the other room. I still have the DVD somewhere because the DVD was the extended cut and... The Blu-ray does not have any of the features except the commentary track. Um, you know, because they're, you know, fucking lazy. Which is weird, because the sequel has all the features from the DVD, but yet this one does not. Which I don't, I don't again, I don't get that. It's the same company, and you put all the features from the sequel on the DVD, or the Blu-ray, but not the first one. And I do have to complain about this Blu-ray because this is a early Blu-ray. This is 06. So this is the year that Blu-ray started. Um, as I have talked about numerous times, a lot of the early Blu-rays suck because of the picture quality. This is encoded in MPEG-2. MPEG-2 is for DVD. So you're pretty much just watching a DVD transfer for the most part. It's cleaned up a little bit. It's more of an upscale, but... You know, I do have to complain about that. And I think this one, well, this one's actually better because this one's AVC, which is nice. But this one is only MPEG-2. So I wish, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but it would be nice if this one got an upgraded Blu-ray with a way better quality and all the extra features and the extended cut. I've never seen the extended cut. I've only seen the theatrical cut. Actually, no, that's not true. I have seen the extended cut before. It's just been a long time. But, again, I have that DVD in here somewhere. But I haven't watched it in a long time. Um, I never played the video game. There was a video game for this. I'd like to check that out one day. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it did well. Um, it made... 300 I think and 30 million worldwide in America it did better overseas but in America it made 150 and it costs 100 to make so it did make a if you don't count marketing and everything it did make a little bit of a change it made enough to make a sequel and then the sequel did well but not as well so that's why there was never a third one um, it would have been cool to see a third one of these I, I wouldn't have mind seeing a third one but too late now but at the end of the day i've again i have always enjoyed this i have always thought that this was a good movie this was a good superhero film this was a good comic book film i've never i know i keep beating the dead horse here proverbially but i've just never understood why people don't like this i've never understood the hate for it i just don't get why i'm just looking at the why is this one like 10 minutes shorter i don't know anyway We'll cover that when we get to that. But I've just never understood why people don't like this. Is it perfect? No. Is it amazing? No. But it's good. It's a good movie. It's a fun movie. Do I think it's the greatest movie ever? No. But I'd rather watch this than the 2015 movie. I'd rather watch this than the new one that's coming out next year. I'll stick with this and the 90s film. And the sequel. But we'll cover that next. But anyway... As always, thank you guys for watching. Take care. And uh, next, we will be getting into the sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer, which I know I keep saying this, but I don't remember anything about that movie, and I've seen it before, but memory is memory, I suppose. All alone in the moonlight. I don't know. Anyway, take care. We'll talk to you soon.